Hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial from yours truly, Alec Loca from Infinite Ammo in rainy and cloudy Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Um, today you get even more free source code. Last time I made a little demo project, uh, a little space shooter game. This time we're going to look at a game that I made for Gamma 4, which is a curated indie game uh, competition slash party that happened at GDC this year. Uh, the past two years I made a game each year for this thing and they managed to get in. This year I didn't manage to get in. Uh, there were also ten times as many applicants this year, so the competition was a little fiercer than usual. Uh, but I th I'm pretty happy with the game that I made for it. Uh, the goal of the game was to sort of make everything out of cubes and use as much stuff that was built into Unity as possible. And I think I probably spent about a week on it, uh, although it was spread out over the course of a month. Uh, so let's just take a look at the, the game. I'll explain sort of what it's about. Gamma 4 this year was all about um, making games that only use a single button, but you could have up to four players. Pretty cool logo, right? So the game has a little tutorial, um, and that might be valuable for some people who are curious about how to do that. Um, I did it in a really sort of sloppy, obvious way, but it's a way that works and you can do it pretty quickly. Basically what I do is, is set up a bunch of groups that get toggled off and on. So it sort of shows how the game works. One of the cool things about the game is it has an isometric view, but you can actually aim pretty reliably, uh, reliably by using these little guider shadows and stuff. And it has airships. So this is a four-player game. Uh, the two people on the left are on the same team. They're fighting the people on the right. And you can shoot shots to take out your enemy's castle. Your little airships are flying around here. They're, they're picking up um, different resources from the center of the map. And the resources are worth different points. So the game uses all the built-in Unity physics, uh, everything is built out of cubes. I can hit stuff, the shots bounce off. Uh, the trajectory stuff, the preview that shows the arc of the shot, I just grabbed off of a wiki. There's a wiki called the Unify Community Wiki, I think, that has a whole bunch of Unity scripts you can just grab. So there's one about doing this shot trajectory stuff, and it saved a lot of time. There's also item blocks, if you charge up your shot to full. You can hit these little item blocks, and they give you different power-ups. For example, a big shot. There's also some boats that come in here. That just spawns some gold in the middle. So one thing I like about this game is just how chaotic it gets once you have four players in and they're all shooting at the same time and everything's sort of going crazy. And the weapons are getting upgraded to the point where you have like a whole pile of shots in a row that are all huge. You kind of feel like a lot of the elements in the game are out of your control, which I think is actually kind of neat. You can also target the other team's airships. That's pretty tricky. Oh, I got one. Takes some skill. That's a pretty cool combo shot. Oh, negative gravity. So it's not like negative gravity is super easy to do in Unity. All you do is change gravity value. You change it back later. Extra shot. So I'll fire two shots in a row. Get some more gold in there. So a game like this is actually really quick to prototype. 
Um, actually, a lot of games are quick to prototype if you can reduce them to really simple assets, like how this game uses cubes. Uh, you can do that for a lot of popular games, even mainstream games, for the core mechanics. So that's sort of a trick to prototype, and this is just do it as quick and dirty as you can. Um, you can still make it look good all that, without using the you know, crazy 3D models or anything. Got a lot of extra shots now. You can see that we're tallying up points too. The points are actually on the field there for each team. And the game uh, caps out at five minutes, which is a gamma restriction. Of course, you have a source code, so you can change that if you want. Wow, I have some pretty big shots now. <laughs> I've got like four of them too, so it takes for to shoot. Boom. Even bigger shot. So this is sort of the ending sequence of the game. Um, <laughs> shows you uh, a tally of each player's points. And you can actually still play while this goes on. That's intentional. Yeah, we got a lot of shots. So that's basically cake. Um, at the end here, we cut to a different angle. That has sort of a cool looking sunset thing. Um, and these are just separate cameras that get toggled off and on. It's really easy to do. And then we go to a different screen here, where we just have a random quote. And we'll move back to the beginning. So now let's just take a look at how this project file is set up. Our scenes here we have the actual game with all the castles and airships and everything in it. We have the intro state, which is this kind of uh, animated scene. We have the logo scene, which is just the splash at the beginning and the quotes, and the title, which was the box text. We have a couple old scenes too, um, just left over from when I first started prototyping this, which is sort of one of the first concept things I was messing around with. I think there's someone to make this guy shoot. I forget what the key is. So we'll just go through these and sort of explain what's going on. This one uses a prefab created in this scene uh, called All Confirm Manager. And as you remember, prefabs are like reusable blueprints that you yourself can build and you can reuse them all your scenes if you want to. Um, in this case, All Confirm Manager handles the four button hold down to advance the screen that is used in a few different places. So all the players would have a corresponding color on their controller. They each only get one button, and they all have to hold down their buttons to advance to the next thing. And these little cubes move up as the buttons are held down. So each cube has its own little script. Actually, that's not true. Sorry. Each cube is just offset by an empty here. Um, you can see the pivot points, which don't make any sense. Never mind what I'm saying. Anyway. They're all managed from this one script, um, and as we get a button down, we move them up, and if they're all up for a certain amount of time, we advance to the next screen. This is really simple. It's reusable everywhere, which is nice. Um, it also uses the flashbang messaging system that we talked about earlier in a previous tutorial. So if you're watching this and you haven't seen that tutorial yet, you may want to watch it before getting into this one.